Hello, thank you for joining me, Allison, and Elise McCall for Where I'm From, number 83. Um, we're doing this one on YouTube to mix things up. So what are you reading right now, Elise? I am reading a book called uh, Funny Weather by Olivia Lang, mm -hmm. Art in an Emergency. It's a collection of uh, like art essays about artists and you know what they do and how they've done it. And especially like Olivia Lang kind of prefaces that it's about uh her dealing with the kind of absurdity of the last you know few years and mm -hmm. everything that's just been a lot kind mm -hmm. of trying to make sense of it all and she's like you know turned to artists to kind mm -hmm. of help her so it's a it's a good read you know she's really uh I think insightful about artists that sounds really cool and coming from an artist that's meaningful to me I am I read I finished all this could be different by Sarah Thungum Matthews who it's a novel about a queer Indian American woman in, around the recession trying to live and survive in Milwaukee get someone to sponsor her green card dealing with trauma from the it's there's a lot packed into it yeah. and it's so it's such a great book about friendship and it moves really quickly and I just thought it was really thought-provoking about kind of what our 20s feel like which is um confusing yeah as someone in their <laughs> 20s that can really attest to that <laughs> and how it feels like everyone else has it figured out and yeah. um and then with the identities that you described yeah. in it it's like that's just like added yeah. well and living like, these kind of dual lives right because she's not out to her family and she's barely out to herself and and reckoning with that and and I think it it's a great book. It's something I seem to be talking about a lot these days, relational trauma, because, you know, we, we, most of us have it and how you have to let, to heal that trauma, you have to let somebody in. Yeah. And it can be a friend. And in this book it is. And so I thought that was a beautiful um, story, like, because oftentimes it's a love story when someone lets someone in. And so it, it's really about the power of friendship and and how we start, I think that for me personally, it took me, it took someone loving me to really start to love myself. And I don't want to say like, because obviously you need to fill your own cup and all that, but it, like you do need to be in some kind of relationship with people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like to yeah. test out and like get better at it, you know, like it's mm -hmm. kind of a skill you have to get good at is like <laughs> learning how to love people so that you can also start to learn to love yourself yeah and what feels good and what doesn't feel good because mm -hmm. sometimes those are surprising categories yeah not necessarily what you might think so I thought this was a really powerful book about that can take all forms it doesn't mean falling in love yeah either. yeah yeah there's lots of yeah. kinds of love <laughs> yeah yeah and it doesn't mean reconciling with your parents like yeah. it doesn't have to mean these sort of traditional tropes it can mean just meeting somebody who says okay I'm here for the long haul but I need you to give me something in return yeah yeah so it's like it's a two-way street rather yep. than it being like a so you have to fix me right. and that's what this relationship is <laughs> yeah those aren't those aren't good either um <laughs> friendships or love relationships um so Elise I'm so excited that you're joining me because I just really like any excuse to talk to Elise um but also I've heard your poem and I've heard it in my brain. I've read it. <laughs> <laughs> you know my voice. So, you know, I'm sure you could just like, you know, imagine me reading it. I just love it. And so do you want to talk about that? You have this one and another one. Do you want to talk about anything? You just want to read it. What do you want to do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'll just preface the like little story that like, you know, I, you asked me to come on and, you know, do this. And I was really excited too. Cause I think it's uh, like, I love you know poetry and you know it's like a fun exercise and I've seen you do it with other people and it seemed like a you know neat thing um but like I, as I started you know you sent me the prompt and as I started writing I was like this feels like vaguely familiar but like not in the way that like I immediately understood like why I was just like huh like maybe that's just deja vu and I kind of like brushed it aside and went proceeded on and wrote the poem but then like literally about a month ago I was like going through some old papers from like my school days in college and I found the I found the poem that I had written in I it suddenly came back to me in my freshman year like in my writing course uh, and it's literally like a full like decade ago so that kind of is an interesting 
interesting timing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, I was like, oh, like, I guess I could, it, it was really interesting because I had already written the other one. Mm -hmm. And so then comparing them of like stuff that like is still kind of present and then stuff that like, I, I've seem to have shifted or have like a kind of new point yeah. of view on in my past yeah. so well, I'm gonna read both I'll read my first the okay. the most recent one and then the old one and we can kind of talk about that okay I'm excited okay where I'm from I am from a small basset hound plushie from jelly sandals and suave hair mousse I am from parking lot puddles gray reflective soaking wet through my socks I am from Western Hemlocks, towering Goliaths that block out most sun. I'm from day trips to the coast and raw umber eyes, from Joe Reddy and Joe Joya. I'm from anxiety and paranoia. From Tushatu and don't scare your mother like that, I'm from a plastic beaded cross hanging on a barren apartment wall. I'm from New York and Ellis Island immigrants, baked ziti, black and white cookies, from the 13 gunshots that wounded one grandpa and the self-inflicted gunshot that killed another. On the top shelf of my bedroom closet stands an album full of gelatin silver prints, messages scrawled in French on their backs. I am from sculptures and paintings, a temporal art with no beginning or end, evolving meaning with each generation. Yay. <laughs> okay. So then old one, we're ready. 2013, Elise. Yes, 2013, Elise. I am from toothpicks, diamond and rounded. I am from sliding screen doors, dented, torn. They felt like dry grass. I am from mold in the wood with spores that tickled my sinuses after every rainfall. I am from televisions in the kitchen and heavy accents from Priscilla and Marcel. I am from the introverts and the night owls from the never talk to strangers and stay where I can see you. I'm from the colorfully beaded cross on the wall, which mommy said never to drop on the ground. I'm from Saratoga and immigrants, big ziti and Venezia's pizza, from the finger my grandpa bit off when he must stick it for a hot dog, to the nasty neighbors my family egged. I am from a plastic bin with a blue snap lid, red-eyed snapshots of familiar faces, neatly tucked in their laminated sheets, waiting on the rest of us to arrive. Oh, that's such a cool experiment. I wish I could. I know it just, it, 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 it worked out. It's really interesting. <laughs> yeah. So what was your, I obviously have impressions, but what were your impressions reading them? Like you yeah. must, it was, it surreal. Like just, I just sometimes get snapshots of myself from the past and there's yeah. something like, Yes. I don't know this, uh, these like echoes of yourself, these, these fully formed echoes of yourself. Like, Oh, I was that person. Yeah. I'm, I'm not her anymore. Yeah. And that person it's like from the past version, I could see there was still a lot being held back where mm -hmm. I feel like the one that I most recently wrote is a lot more like kind mm -hmm. of, um, I'm not going to say necessarily, it's like, it's not that I was being dishonest in the old one, but the, it's like, I was still like maybe too sensitive, too um, afraid to share things that yes, felt I... like they were too raw, you mm -hmm. know, like yeah. in the new ones, I feel a little like I can actually talk about this stuff and be pretty like direct about like what I'm saying, like what I'm actually getting at. Mm -hmm. um, but then I'm also kind of just impressed with the, uh, like the certain things that stayed almost like exactly the same like the beaded cross on the wall it's yes. like oh wow that must be like such a that image of that cross in my like you know like mm -hmm. little apartment with my mom like it, it always just stuck out to me so much because it's just I'm not it's like it's so it was just so small on this big wall and like I always thought it was so interesting that like you know and it's just this like kind of tacky little mm -hmm. thing like bright colors it doesn't really it's it's kind of like a paradox in itself mm -hmm. well so, and aesthetically it's an odd choice right because it's sort of setting yeah tiny. yeah like, yeah yeah so Which, it I mean, stands like, out because it's like why is it there but, yeah you know? yeah but like the there's a lot of stuff like that in my you know 
but I, you know, it sticks out in your mind because you're, and my mom made choices like that, or my family would make choices like that. And, but like, I also appreciate it because it's sort of like, I don't know, it says a lot about, I think, them and their choices and that they're just like, I like this. This is how I'm going to do it, you know? Yeah. Not definitely. too concerned with other people, you know, it's very intimate. Yeah. Well, I thought too, um, speaking of something that felt like more raw was the grandfather who sh- was shot. 13 times yeah and then the one that shot himself like yeah because that's a really strong I, I think I think gun violence is always a strong thing but right now it just feels like yeah it's very more so it's very raw yeah um and I have a gunshot violence in my own poem so yeah uh, um it made me think of mine too where mine was about my brothers and yours is about your grandfather's and those parallel <laughs> for of course because I'm the hero of my own story I'm like, look at these parallels Elise and I have, because yeah. Elise and I have, for those of you who don't know us, a lot of strange things I know. in common. I know. We are very kindred spirits. Yeah. I, I've always <laughs> felt it. I like, you know, I've heard your poem yeah. and your like updated poems and such. And yeah. I was like, oh, Allison, you know, and every time you'll like be like taught, you you know, like you sent out a newsletter recently mm-hmm. and I was like reading through it. I was like, oh my God, I'm like thinking about this person too. Or like that kind of thing's coming up for me as well, you know? So I just, <laughs> it's obvious though, like we're friends. Yeah, <laughs> right? It was just kind of like, but such a specific thing. I was like, whoa, it's, yeah. <laughs> And also what's interesting is really, this is the 83rd time I'm doing this. There is always something in someone's poem that makes me feel seen. Yeah. Yeah. And and you wouldn't necessarily think that because there are all kinds of people and some of them are friends and some of them aren't. And, but I just, you know, us humans, we are intertwined, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And these authentic, like when you start to get at the heart of like those experiences it really you know you start to see like oh we have a lot more in common Mm -hmm. probably you know and those Um, things that stick with us like truly of course those things that leave a real impression and and yours with the water the socks in the first version oh man that is such a I didn't grow up like but I've had it happen and it's such a visceral sensation when you have those socks and you're just oh yeah and yeah and I spent line so really much, captured it yeah I, mean, I spent so much time just like stare I look because I grew up a lot of you know I was like grew up early in New York and then I yeah. moved it when I was around seven or eight to Oregon you know mm-hmm. and so and in Oregon it rains all the time right <laughs> so like I would just spend like and nobody would go outside and play when it was raining so mm-hmm. I would just like stand outside in the parking lot and like look at puddles and I'd be like transfixed I always thought puddles were really cool you know like mm-hmm. these reflective surfaces that they showed are. what was happening above mm-hmm. you you know and so I always had fun with it but yeah you know inevitably you get wet <laughs> always um, but like and on the topic too of the you know previous version you know like I'm, it's like there's allusions to like rainfall and wood and things that it's like yeah that's clearly a big left a big impression um but then like something like with the shooting you know the the gun violence in my family it's like I instead in the like the older version 2013 version it's like I kind of masked it in like a childhood memory of like my Mm -hmm. grandpa trying to protect me from it by being like oh I bit my finger off instead of like oh like I was shot so much and my finger like blew up you know (laughs) it's like uh, it's like oh thank you grandpa for protecting me but then like you know I kind of like did that same thing as opposed to like now I feel like I'm kind of more like Mm -hmm. I'd rather be like kind of more forward about it Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah and do you feel like this is a conversation we were just having before we started recording but do you think there is also some relationship to it being like poetry with a capital p and that in that we more there's this perception of it being when it's serious we allude to things and that directness is somehow less artistic yeah yeah definitely i mean like i've always felt because that's also been a a theme within the art world and mm-hmm. painting and such mm-hmm. is like oh you know like illustration or mm-hmm. like being ver- or like having subject being figurative yeah. for the longest time that's been kind of like poo-pooed you know right. and it's only in the last anyone like, can do that yeah, yeah yeah and it was sort of like you know there was a sort of there formed a hierarchy in the post-war mm-hmm. America especially of like well the more authentic art is abstract expressionism and that kind of such. And there's some, there's some beauty in that too. I do. I can agree with that sometimes, but like, it doesn't mean that we just like 
get rid of all that other stuff and diminish its value because mm-hmm. also you know it happens to be that a lot of people who make that stuff also are like women people of color mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like it's suddenly all these voices started coming out it's like this mm-hmm. is the work we're making and then it's like all of a sudden it's like we're not doing that anymore you know it's like mm-hmm. okay and so I do feel like you know sometimes you, I felt like I had to be funnier or had to be like witty you have to be like overly academic about it you know mm-hmm. and and not say the thing but like, I, I don't know, like you, you recommended a book to me a while ago called Body Work by oh, yeah. Melissa Phoebos, yeah. you know, and, mm-hmm. um, and in it, she I talks recommend about, it to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. So and, good. Yeah. And it's like, and she really gets at like being more authentic in your writing and like drafting over and over until you get to like, what is the truth, you know, that you might even be hiding from yourself. Yeah. And I, I, when I said they could, anyone could do it, that wasn't a, that wasn't what I really meant. I, I think what I meant was there's this perception that like, if you study and you practice, anyone can draw a figure, you know, yeah. and, or can write um, a poem, but mm-hmm. that, that where, what's really important or what really is, is voice and that you can't bring voice or you can't bring artistry to these like basic concepts. But yeah. in fact, you can and you do. It's just not necessarily valued by the academy. Yeah. And well, because there's also a sense of like, well, we've been there and done that. Like, yes. what's like, what's the yes. next ism? You know, yes. which you know, it's kind of like if you talk to most people these days in the art world, it's like that's kind of silly. Like, the, all the yes. isms are out the window now. <laughs> yes, but I think for a long time it was, you know, it was devalued. Yeah. doing these these essentials for anyway is it, and it's so interesting too because you and I have both been to some form of art school and within that con- within that construct there is a lot of learning these things like yeah you need to learn it in order to like you know do other things yeah right yeah. like you have to like then prove it like it's like look look I learned the stuff and, the, and then you almost feel like you have to display it in some way but like yeah. in that in that sense like people can kind of tell that it's like yeah you're not really like where's your voice you know like you're just kind of parroting some overly yes. academic you know principles yes. that don't necessarily have anything to do with you no and I got really good at trying at, at that sort of mimicry yeah um yeah me too and then you have to peel it away and and what's interesting is I was always there I'm in everything that I've done I think most of us are but you do have to go through the process of then peeling away and uh yeah getting to like the heart of it all and yeah. I mean and I even feel like I kind of acknowledge that at the end of my um you know my most recent yes. version because it's like I talk about you know like it was saying in the prompt it was like well you know how what are what's the importance of objects and images in your you know for family and and you know the um in for your your sense of self or what whatnot and uh and I was like oh well I guess to me it's like I started realizing that there's not like this hierarchy like you know paintings and sculpture is just another word for another way to say images and Mm -hmm. and objects you know so it's like these things in our home you know like there's the kind of like on the societal scale sculpture and painting is like what what ends up getting kind of lifted and and passed down and such is kind of like a shared ancestry among us all mm-hmm. um but like we all have that in these like small ways too with the like little objects and and images that are like our precious paintings and sculptures mm-hmm. and the, and specifically that they exist atemporally like you can yeah, come that. at them at any mm-hmm. point in any way and kind of have a relationship to them it doesn't it's not contingent on you being like fluent in a language you know yeah. which I, it's like and that's why I kind of got at with the French it's like I don't speak French I don't know French and so it's like I can't really penetrate mm-hmm. those those statements you know what's what's being said in it but like the images I can relate to I can see and know something of it mm-hmm. and that's how art works yeah. for all of us I think there are layers of it whether it's um readily accessible to critics or people who are just <laughs> casually ingesting it it's still a value and I think mm-hmm. for so long like we were talking about doing it right and I was saying yeah. that doing it right is like the greatest enemy of creation because yeah right according to who and for me I I've really had to spend I, I think doing this every week and listening to these poems and feeling moved by them and to be honest, the only thing that moves me or doesn't is the authenticity. Yeah. 
it's not the words or the structure that, you know, it's like, yeah. if I feel as if someone has given me something, yeah, I feel privileged to have received it. Yeah. Yeah. All the rest is kind of like window dressing and personal yeah. preference, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. helped me like value myself because I truly do value these people, the people who are coming to share with me and it's helped me value my own authenticity yeah. and, and to, and to look for it and yeah. to like ferret it out and take the time to sit with it and not be too, not to be as much concerned with what it looks like to others. Yeah. And I think that's what, that's the power of this prompt in this poem, because the structure of it is like, it's very like, it's, it's very humble. And it's like, you start to realize like that some of the best art is just like humble and in, in being true to itself but we overthink it and we get like kind of mired you know bogged down by all this um you know structure form rules all this stuff that we think we should be doing but like this poem just says like yeah like what's a thing that you liked as a kid <laughs> you know like what what's something you remember you know like and all of a sudden you realize like oh that's what like some of the best art is the art that you love the most is just is people being like knowing themselves so well and being pretty honest about it yeah that that's beautifully put um I could talk to you for as we know as yeah, we, we have yeah <laughs> for hours on zoom during uh the pandemic uh do you have but we're we're going to wrap up just to follow the structure of this um do you have any last thoughts about this experience or your poems or anything no, I mean, I, that's, you know, that's the thing. I really love doing it. It's nice to, again, and have that comparison to like yeah. past me and be like, wow, you know, I'm I'm growing and changing too. I would totally encourage people to like, you know, especially people you've had in the past and such. It's like, do you, like after you've done this one, like wait another like five years, a year, I don't know, like how, whatever yeah. time feels right to you yeah. and do another one and think like, oh, you know, who who's this person now? <laughs> and I think it's also fun. I've done a couple it's just fun to see you know we really do contain multitudes it's not just a saying it's like oh there's all these different um I'm reading Maggie Smith you could make this place beautiful right now it's her memoir that's uh, she wrote the viral poem good bones and um in it she talks about us she talks about a relationship but also herself as a nesting doll Mm -hmm. and I thought that was such a beautiful uh metaphor like we do contain all of these versions yeah. of ourselves and and she also talks about it in relationship to a marriage you know that there's the love and then that marriage falls apart there's different dolls yeah. but they all do nest in one another um, yeah and I think like it's expansive it's funny because I think lots of times people think of prompts or containers as constraining but I think there it is actually expansive because it gives you the safety to dig in mm-hmm. yeah yeah so well thank you Elise for being here I really enjoyed it yeah thank you for having me (laughs) bye